The city manager shall be held accountable to the mayor and city council for his or her actions and those of his or her subordinates. And the mayor and city council retain the prerogative of requiring the city manager to make verbal or written reports concerning his or her activities. Those of his or her subordinates and the administrative services under his or her charge. Regarding your allegations, Mr. Reno, Mr. Reno has created a hostile work environment by continually <clears throat> and directly discussing with one of my department heads, the finance director, ways to find fault with me. This occurred both at City Hall and in public settings. Mr. Reno has mentioned to numerous members of the community and to one other council member, Mr. Shu, that he was going to fire me. Mr. Reno has directly threatened me with loss of my job and shortly thereafter, some of my department heads also warned me to change my friends, especially the Murphys. Mr. Reno tried to coerce me to discuss health issues about one of my department heads who he does not like. I am prohibited from discussing the health records of any city employee, both by the city confidentiality and conflict of interest agreement and by federal health privacy laws, known as HIPAA. In addition, Mr. Reno failed to evaluate me this past September an evaluation that was to have taken place June 2011. The, follow, the following replies are numbered according to Mr. Reno's statement. Reason one, this is regarding budgetary allegations from Mr. Reno. I regularly initiated monthly budget reports and updates to, to the city council. Before my arrival, former city managers did not do this. Council was given less information about finances but I consider this an essential process. Council members have reviewed all expenditures and payroll warrants with only very minimal objections. I cannot understand this complaint as they almost always approve these items on the warrants. The flags on the Riverwalk was a project started by former city manager Soltis. It was a project, sp project sponsored admirably by Councilman Shu. Council approved this project several times during the budget processes, including the final budget. The council then approved the project when a contractor was selected. The council also approved the purchase of the flagpoles on two separate times. The LED lighting project. Mr. Reno, I have never purchased the LED lights. The method of procurement for this project was approved several times by the city attorney. Mr. Beatty, bowing to political pressure and his inability to make a decision, has changed his mind regarding this potential purchase on several occasions. To date, the council has never voted the project down. Instead, council has instructed me to issue an RFP, a request for proposal, for the purchase of said LED lights. I was preparing to do so when council began termination proceedings. The Colorado Avenue project in regards to tree mitigation. I did not move money out of the capital improvement budget. The changes to the CIP, as outlined by Mr. Reno, have been unanimously approved by city council. I did the same process for the clubhouse, your pet project. Not once did you complain about that process. Let's move on to the North Lake Dam. How dare you criticize me about that? That, that issue has been in, in the works for over 10 years. Over 10 years. Construction drawings have been completed. The city has completed, has recently received a major grant 
and this project is scheduled to be completed by 2012. Additionally, I have instructed the engineering firm to perform a feasibility study for the potential use of installing hydroelect a hydroelectric facility at the North Lake Dam complex. Regarding your allegations that I recommended uh, Mr. Beatty, I have never reprimanded him. Apparently, this complaint came from Attorney Beatty. According to the city charter, the city attorney is appointed by the city council and provides legal services for the city council, the mayor, the city manager, and other offices of the city. My reason for moving Mr. Beatty was to stop Mr. Beatty from constantly eavesdropping on my telephone conversations and because I needed the space for a small conference room. Strategically speaking, Mr. Beatty's new office is ideally located across from the clerk of the court's office. Regarding city personnel, the city charter gives the city manager full authority to appoint city personnel. It gives council no power whatsoever regarding city personnel. My qualifications regarding the supervision of the Power and Light Department are as follows. I have supervised three municipal Power and Light Departments with a combined experience of nine years. I have directly supervised a major hydroelectric dis uh, upgrade. I have directly supervised a major upgrade for the distribution system in the community of Northfield, Vermont. I have negotiated power purchase contracts. I have been a member of the Vermont Public Power Supply Authority and the New England Public Power Association. I have completed five years, a five-year apprentice program for electrical services and I held a master electrical license in the state of Vermont. Council, Council Member Velasquez. Ms. Velasquez has retaliated against me because of my involvement in the Geno's gambling raid. My involvement included the CBI investigation of illegal gambling at Geno's Sports Bar. She, at that time, was a liquor license holder in Geno's. The investigation eventually resulted in, in the suspension of Geno's liquor license by the city and the State Department of Revenue. Ms. Velasquez knew of my involvement and of the involvement of Police Chief Glorioso. She has made statements that can only be construed as wanting to get rid of Chief Glorioso. She cannot get rid of any department head as, as only the city manager can do that. It is no secret, secret that I strongly approve of Chief Glorioso's performance and I am one of his strong supporters. Until I am gone and another more council com compliant manager is hired, Ms. Velasquez will not be able to get rid of Chief Glorioso. I simply stand in her way. Further, Ms. Velasquez did not evaluate me last September, nor did she attend any of the two strategic council meetings that were held this past January and fe February. Since Ms. Velasquez did not number her reasons, my responses are as follows, corresponds Ms. Ms. Velasquez's statements. Regarding the bid process for the carpet project in the library, this was undertaken before the library became a city department. The library board had full jurisdiction over this project. The procurement was legal, and there was no objections by the city finance director, the city attorney, or when we got audited, audited by the city auditors. 